Hello everyone and welcome to another high elo game of Age of Empires today. We got on a lucky one, came in 18 to 1 as Hera playing as the Britons in blue prepares to take on MBL playing as the Red Tatars. Now while the players heard their herdables explore their immediate surroundings and try to go up to feudal as fast as possible, adorable wrinkly elephant butts abound. Let's take a look at the Civ matchup we'll be watching today. The Britons very much a Civ built around supporting its ranged units. Archery ranges work 10% faster. Foot archers, except for skirmishers, come with extra range starting in Castle Age. And if that's not enough range for you, they can upgrade all of their foot archers to get even more range. Now, all of this range, range, range is great news for the unique unit of the Britons, the Longbow. This is a decent foot archer that comes with a massive 12 range when fully upgraded. Now, Briton Trebs are also some of the most powerful in the game because they can be upgraded to do blast damage and have 100% accuracy against non-moving stationary units. Now, to support their military production, Britain town centers do cost 50% less wood, and their shepherds work 25% faster, giving them a bit of a leg up in the very early stages of the game. Opposing the Britons, we've got the Tatars, a sieve that does everything it can to push you towards mounted units. Their cav archers come with extra line of sight. Parthian tactics and thumb ring are free of charge. Does take damage from the elephant. You guys know I'm on a bit of a kick. Oh no, the elephant now attacking a second villager. <laughs> Some Tatar mounted units, such as their scout cav line units, their step lancers, and their cav archers can be upgraded to get extra armor. And their unique unit is the Keshik. This is a super cool medium cavalry unit that actually generates gold every single time it pokes and prods an enemy unit. And in the late stages of a game of Age of Empires, when gold starts getting scarce and raids start becoming the name of the game, a Keshik can come in very handy. Now, once your army is on the field of battle, it is incredibly important for the Tatars to get this. You might be wondering, why the hell is Isaac pointing and highlighting a blank part of the map? I am not. This is a hill. This is elevation. The Tatars, when they take the high ground, instead of doing the usual 25% extra damage, they do 50% extra damage. Now, this becomes even more important in the later stages of the game once Trebs are out because the Tar Trebs can be upgraded to get an extra two range. Oh, my God. Oh, right at the end. Oh, it looked like it was about to get a, an elephant pull with no damage. Something I always love to see. Now, as I mentioned, a fully upgraded Tatar Treb with Timurid Siegecraft comes with a massive 19 range, which is super duper cool. Now, the Tatars, to help feed their hungry cavalry-based army, their herdables contain 50% more food, and starting in Castle Age, every new town center spawns two free sheep. So today, we've got potentially a battle of the ranges. <laughs> Damage. The stork just kind of gliding. Okay, never mind. Now flaps its wings. We've got, a, we've got a, a very interesting game here. Not only are these two of the best players in the world, but you've got the longest ranged archer unit versus the longest ranged treb versus one of the coolest warwolf treb upgrades versus just an insanely powerful cavalry civilization. Ranged, melee, the Tatars have it all. And with that 50% hill bonus or elevation bonus, whatever you want to call it, they are just nigh unstoppable when they take the high ground. Let's take a look at the bases. MBL, oh man, open much? Look at the whole front forward facing part of his base. Front forward facing part of his base. Yeah, I think that's the way to say it. Completely open primary gold. Very, very exposed to the front. Although primary stone, nice and secure in the back. Hera already out on the map looking, hunting sniffing out where his opponent is should run by these uh what are these dragons yeah dragons let's take a look at his base while he does so primary gold nice and secure a little bit in the back primary stone a little bit in the forward position also completely open this base but a nice forest here does kind of bifurcate creates a natural barrier to the forward facing part of his uh base mbl runs into this forest let's see let's see which direction he decides to go in okay what will he run into here? Uh, not much. Now he sees the mill. Hera, for his part. Oh, man. Okay, so he's seen the house, which tells him exactly where his opponent is. Now he gets a little bit of a sneak peek of a villager there. So overall, I would give the base advantage here to Hera. MBL, take a look at this. 
what are these uh, maps we've seen recently with the spawning? Where the hell is this forest? Look how far away from the town center it is. These two also not super duper close. Hera, for his part, also forests far away. So ranged units in this game will go a long way. You can wall these kinds of forests off. You can protect your lumberjacks with palisades, houses, etc. But what you can't protect them against is ranged units. So we'll see. Will the ranged units of the Tatars outdo the ranged units of the Britons? Will we even see ranged units? Who the hell knows? Let the players decide for themselves. Let the players show us exactly where they want to go. Both players hitting feudal off the back of the same villager count, 19. Now both have the exact same villager count still at 20. Hera getting the gold. MBL continues to basically just hang out. In the front of Hera's base, Hera's scout, on the other hand, moving back. Look at this. Look at this. This is not something we normally see out of Hera. This is not complete here, by the way. So our Briton does need to finish that uh, wall off, but not something we usually see. This massive uh, construction undertaking out of Hera. Although, what choice does he have? Like I said, this, is this might as well just be one big open map. I'm going to zoom out. Let's take a look at the attack path and see if there's any hills which might naturally favor... The Tatars, there are a few hills on Hera's side of the fence here. I'm imagining a fence running down the middle between these two uh, bases and big flat ground here for our Tatar cavalry to operate in, but also for uh, Britain structures or Britain range units to operate in. That being said, we've got a bit of an oddball attack here. Two skirmishers, a spearman, and a scout walk into a bar. Harris says, I've got three archers, GTFO, and immediately <laughs> guns down the spearman because you want your scout to engage. And now that the spearman is gone, the scout is free to absolutely destroy these skirmishers. Although maybe Hera retreated with his archers a little prematurely. Never mind. Never mind. Two kills to one. It's MBL now on the back foot moving back, but five skirmishers should be able to kill this uh, scout unit. But get to the high ground. You are Tatars. There we go. Hera knows that. So Hera moves towards the high ground. And he knows that his scout is with 7 HP. And it can basically accomplish nothing more. An interesting placement for a stable for Hera. Blocking the path for a farm. Fascinating. For those of you who are wondering, as I always love to point out. One, two, three, four, five carpets. Maps used to come with only four until the May, that be huge April or May patch. I already forget when you have a newborn, all the days kind of blend in together. I don't even know what day of the week it is today. I think it's close to the weekend. I think it's a Wednesday or a Thursday. <laughs> but one of those patches, April or May, did uh, introduce an extra carpet, which is uh, super fun and cool and random. And the more random and nonsensical something is, the more I love it. But speaking of random and nonsensical, there's nothing random about this uh, archer sandwich that MBL tries to get create here. Does get one, chases down another. His uh, ar oh, skirmishers are under attack here. Will lose this? No, he does not. Oh no, the skirmishers probably should have pivoted south. Instead of pivoting, uh, continuing north, probably should have pivoted south towards these spearmen. Now Hera running around, but one of these scouts does have a horrible, horrible amount of HP. 12. And now his gold is very exposed. I thought MBL's gold would be the problem here in this game. No, it turns out it's Hera's gold. Okay. Getting in as close as possible to the villager. Will he lose the villager or will he escape with her? Army supply here. In favor of our Tatar, who is now housed at 45. Hera's got 60 supply, but only 42 of it taken up. Loses another scout, the weak one. But forcing MBL to make a choice here. Does he go after the archer? Look at this one bait archer. I don't know if that's uh, if that was a bait archer to keep these skirmishers here. I don't think he needed that, or if that was just a mistake. But in any event, all of these skirmishers are going to die. This is a one-way trip. 0.96 movement speed to 0.96 movement speed means no unit here has an advantage over the other and these scouts are going to have a field day it is going to be 15 kills oh does manage to get a few more archers look at mbl okay it is 15 kills to seven 
more Tatar units in feudal streaming ahead. Let's see what our uh, Tatar has once these uh, parties disengage. Look at Hera sniping the uh, the spearmen, knowing they are the only danger here. If the spearmen can die, then the skirmishers will die. And let's take a very quick look. We see a barracks and archery range. Blacksmith all the way in the back here. For our Britain. We saw that stable going up. We saw the archery range going up. Blacksmith also. <laughs> Part of it. Uh, hanging over the ether. The void. The disc world. Into space. Nine army supply to eight for our Tatar. Who is now moving in. But he's down two villagers. What are their resources like? Both of them look like they're about to uh, head up to castle in the next uh, 60 seconds or so, I would say. Hera with a bit of a food advantage. Although, just now, decides to build two more scouts. Which means his food just went down 160 units, steaks, chopped uh, mutton. Well, what do we want to call units of food in this game? <laughs> MBL first to click up. Is he first to click up? No, they're clicking up at the exact same time. Um, actually, no, no, MBL, I think a split second ahead of Hera. Literally a split second ahead of him. We'll keep an eye on the icons in the bottom right of our screen. And MBL, yet again, sacrificing skirmishers to get archers. He doesn't want those Britain archers in Castle Age. Remember, they start coming with extra range and can be upgraded for even more range. You do not want archers around here if you're fighting the Britons. But... In his bloodthirsty quest to rid Arabia of Britain archers, he loses all of his skirmishers. Only one remains, four more on the production tab. But four more out of how many archery ranges did he add anymore? No, just the, just the one archery range. So it's going to be a while until this army is replenished by MBL, who continues to lose units. Oh, sorry about that, everyone. Had to go take care of a baby emergency. Not a really an emergency, just a crying baby. In any event, Hera pushing into MBL here. Like I was saying, this is uh, probably exactly the situation MBL was trying to avoid by building a huge amount of skirmishers and trying to snipe these archers because in 19 seconds, these guys are going to be, uh, well, not going to be crossbows, but the upgrade is most likely going to start. Let's see who, uh, by the way, hit castle first here at the bottom right of our screen gonna be like very quick yeah mbl by like a split second oh i don't know why capture age is doing this with the uh if you take a look at their names at the bottom right those are not their uh, elo scores their elo scores are underneath their names at the top of your screen here at 2707 mbl 2799 i'm not too sure what these uh these might be from another game or another time in any event it is what it is. Britain's one extra town center. Two extra town centers. Beautiful locations for both, by the way. Protecting his flanks, getting additional resources. Lots and lots of room for farms. Wood to the right, stone to the south. And now, what is MBL going to do? He's getting more skirmishers, but they are just basic skirmishers. Oh, never mind. 48 seconds away. This is what he's going to do. Castle. Now, the Britons, not exactly the heaviest of hitting civilizations. These crossbows are going to be very scared of a castle, which, by the way, he must have seen. Yeah, he saw the construction. Keshex? <laughs> okay, let's see it. Very excited. Like I said, every poke, every prod, they generate gold. We'll take a look if we're lucky enough to see this Keshek in the uh, very near future. He's uh, So far, he's just kind of hiding in the castle. Continuing his basic training before he reveals himself in, onto the map. But one Keshek, more elite skirmishers. Surely he must have built more archery ranges. No, he did not. And don't call me surely. Elite skirmishers again sacrificing themselves here. I say sacrificing because these are these scout cavalry are going to absolutely wreck them. Plus army supply. 24 to 9 MBL. Down by about 25 total supply right now. Down 10 villagers, down 17 army supply. This is very bad for our Tatar. This is incredibly bad. Did he throw away too much army? Again, the only good news for him, these are not heavy hitting units. These are not knights 
These are not going to demolish structures very quickly. The unfortunate part for MBL is that if you are trying to stay the hand of any ranged civ in the game, probably you don't want to do that to the Britons with their extra range. Look at that. Eight range on these crossbows. And he's being so annoying, is Hera, with this one scout. And again, the gold I figured would be a problem is a problem, but Hera retreating. Is he sending villagers forward? Is there going to be some kind of construction behind this university? He's getting town watch. So he's going to be able to see a lot further. A knight coming out from him as well. Three Kashiks for a Tatar who has gotten his army supply up to a massive 11. Although we'll see how much more he can build. Hera is, is housed at the moment. I don't see him building any houses on the map. Do you? I don't see anything on the mini map to indicate that Hera is building any more housing, any more uh, supply. Uh oh. What's the name of the game here for Hera? He's not building units. Okay, now I think he realizes it immediately. Three houses. So supply block there for a little bit allowed MBL to add four more army supply to his army. Three Keshiks getting scale barding armor. And like I said, MBL can hold because the Britons just... Yeah, this is not the Turks with those uh, insanely powerful gunpowder units. This is not... Uh, the Teutons, this is not uh, any of the number of incredibly heavy-hitting civilization. This is a ranged civilization, and ranged civilizations, uh, or ranged units, rather, are generally much weaker. Probably the weakest units in the game, right? I mean, the ra it makes sense. You're relying on your range. You're relying, <laughs> so far, you're relying on these dodging skills here. Okay, he seems to be going Keshek's bloodlines as well. So these seven Keshek's here, they are... What a beautiful unit. When your job is to raid for gold, you better deck your horse out in gold. Look at that. What a fantastic, wonderful unit. Finally does manage to get that scout. That being said, was <laughs> not exactly a game-changing pickoff here. I'm trying to zoom in on them when they're in the uh, relax mode, just so we can see this unit. Oh, man, such a pretty unit. Hera says, you know what? I'm not even going to bother engaging into your skirmishes. Hera respecting MBL's army, perhaps a little too much. Uh, perhaps a little too much. He's ahead by 20% in terms of score. A fourth town center going up for him. I mean, he doesn't have our God's eye view. Imperial. That's what the game plan was. That's why he retreated. He didn't want to put on any kind of aggression here. He does not want to lose any of these crossbows, even one of them, because I suspect... We are going to see Arbalests out of our Britain. I might be wrong. Oh, good. Well, uh, well placed town center here, though. Might want to... And <laughs> every new town center, you get the two free sheep. Remember, their herdables come with 50% more food. So MBL must suspect something, right? He says, you know what? I saw your massive army. There's no way you're scared of a few skirmishers. I don't think you've seen the Keshiks. So why are you, where are you? Why are you not attacking me? And MBL needs to scout yesterday. Hera is doing a fantastic job scouting with this one knight, knowing that it's not going to take that much damage from skirmishers. But the knight doesn't have the vision that a, uh, that a scout would have. So both of these players playing a little bit in the dark. MBL f vying for control here of the center. Hera a minute away from Imperial. Look at MBL's resources. Look at MBL's resources. He has no clue what's about to hit him. Okay, never mind. Does see the Keshiks now. An interesting attack round there from Hera, expecting the Keshiks to immediately head north. They do not, which means he wasted one of the volleys, which means he is going to lose. Take a look at his gold, MBL's gold, once these Keshiks engage into battle. 195, 196, 209, 210, 211, 212. It is so cool to watch. Now the Vikings have to actually kill a unit to get the gold with the new uh, patch. The Keshiks do not. The Keshiks just have to poke and prod with their lance, their spear, their golden spear of economic destiny. And MBL somehow susses out that he needs to attack. And I think Hera here with a little bit of a mistake attacking those Keshiks before he hit Imperial. MBL, what do you do here? Okay. 
You have two choices. As always, you have three. You can always resign, which I don't think MPL should do. But realistically, you have two choices here. Do you go and rush up to Imperial yourself, or do you double down on Castle Age? And that is what our Tatar is doing. Now look, doubling down on Castle Age, not a terrible strategy with Keshex on the field. Obviously, you, you'd want Elite if you can. But like I said, the Britons... The crossbow currently attacks on a 7. He saw light cav that attack on a 7. This army is manageable for a Tatar Castle Age army. Let me know in the comments below if you agree or disagree. I think against the Britons Imperial, I mean, soon it's going to be very hard. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Very soon it's going to be very hard for MBL to deal with this army, especially since he's housed at 115 and I see only, what, one house being built? But as things stand right now, the best unit here is the Keshek. Four Pierce Armor makes it very strong against a crossbow that attacks on an eight, which means they do a damage of four, which means they need 33 crossbows to one-shot a Keshek. 33 crossbows, and he's got 20. So the Keshiks will be able to close the distance between them and the crossbows, but MBL needs to be careful again. I mean, his army is positioned perfectly. Skirmishers to the right to take care of the crossbows. Keshex to the left to hound and dog the light cab. But he needs to buy more time. If you want to go feudal versus uh, castle versus imperial, you are going to need numbers. And right now, MBL does have the numbers. But any second now, the best of his scouting uh, knowledge, these crossbows with their 10 range. <laughs> 10 freaking range at any moment can become arbalests. Wow. Hera, look at this. So defensive. Protecting his flanks with a castle to the south, a castle to the north, and the Keshiks move in. MBL realizes that, again, in any second, these guys can become uh, arbalests. Look at the surround. The attempted surround on the crossbows wanted to block their path with bodies. So that the skirmishers could catch up. I mean, look at MBL's gold. Going up, up, up. And he is doing a good job, unfortunately for him. These are now Arbalests. Arbalests that attack on a 10. No armor upgrades yet for our Britain, by the way. Still six seconds away just from padded armor. Just the most basic plus one armor. Which they now get. MBL still has the army supply. He's down almost 40 villagers. Hera just absolutely crushing the economy game. Although I think 130 villagers for Britons might be a little bit of overkill. Probably better in the 120 range. But what's an extra 10 villagers between friends? Who knows? Who cares? Another castle for the uh, Tatar. I was going to say for the Keshik. But no, this is the Tatar. Keshek streaming forward. MBL's army composition is not bad. Don't get me wrong. Again, these Arbalists attack on a 10, but four Pierce Armor means they do six damage, which means they need 22 shots to kill one Keshek, and there's only 13 of them on the field. 15 in total. And he's not nullifying these uh, Arbalists yet. But now our Britain does take the army supply lead. Now there is a castle, which MBL is going to see. This is his vision. There is a... I don't know why Hera is so hesitant to engage into this. Oh, MBL taking an absolute terrible fight in terms of his skirmishers. Once they die, the Arbalists are going to be free to support this uh, light cab. And he's got enough of a meat shield here to absolutely take this fight. Let's see what happens. Am I right? Am I wrong? Castle also goes up right behind MBL, backstabbing arrows. Oh no, our Tatar dropped a sub-10 army supply. Finally has a, more than 100 villagers, but... Oh lord. And he's gonna see this castle go up. Yeah, what do you do? 30 army supply to 11, 130 villagers to 101 MBL. I love that he doubled down on Castle Age, but he took just a few premature engages, as did Hera, by the way, right before he hit Imperial, when he took that engage. Where was that? I think here, with the crossbows against the skirmishers. 
He took way too much unnecessary damage, but what a fun game. Britain's not exactly uh, known for their speed, but Hera here using them quite well. Conscription 40 seconds away. Blast Furnace also, Blast Furnace rather, also starting. 21 Light Cav on the way to support and provide a meat shield for 23 Arbalests. And I mean, our Tatar, usually the Civ that does the raiding, take a look at how open MBL's base is. So he knows if he loses his army, which he uh, looks like he's about to do, his, what is this, 7 army supply out of 11 is here. And that's 7 army supply. What is this, 1 HP? 1 HP on this Kashyyyk. <laughs> oh, yuck. Once he loses this, his base is completely open. Hera bringing the Nutcracker, cracking open the base, is exactly what he's going to do. He's going to raid. None of these town centers are defended, except for this one here from a, with a castle. But this was amazing. That castle went up at probably the best possible time it could have for Hera. Probably the worst possible time for MBL. 94 arbs and crossbows to 74 skirmisher. Hera with the typical plus 200 APM. Uh, six minutes ago. MBL also peaking about 10 minutes ago. Not bad. Economy must be much more for the Britons, right? With that huge villager lead. 10,000, 30% bigger economy. A little bit more wood, a lot more food, a lot more gold, and stone identical almost. No relics to, to write home about. No converts, no nothing. Let's take a look at the kill count. 123 kills to 124 with only four villagers. So our Tatar did kill four villagers to zero, but at the end of the day, even though the kill count was the same, you're trading Castle Age for Imperial Age units. So the more Imperial Age units are left, and he had a window there, did our Tatar, where these guys were crossbows that attacked on a seven. Now they're Arbalests that attack on a ten. And so he had a tiny, tiny window, and I think he used it quite well. But ultimately, at the end of the day, I mean, his production, you've got 2,000 gold. 1100 stone and you've got two archery ranges his production structures were just not there to support the i love the castles pumping out keshiks but you're not pumping out enough elite skirmishers turn this clump of three into 15 to 20 turn this clump of four into i don't i don't think you even need that much 10 and you've got yourself a pretty damn good army Sure, castles are going to be a problem, but you know what you can do with castles? Go around the castle. And even though Hera's going to get out Trebs, because he is an Imperial, although hasn't shown any inclination to get Trebs, and quite frankly, if MB, I think if MBL knew how broke Hera was, he could have, would have probably continued this game. Take a look at Hera's resources. MBL has more wood than Hera has total resources. Or approximately the same. 2,000 gold. 1100 stone he could have bought a little bit more stone did it, how many uh stone miners did he have no he had 11 on stone so easily could have built two more castles in the very immediate future but once this castle goes up this stone is nullified and all of the 11 villagers need to find a new place to mine which i'm trying to look on the mini map doesn't actually exist the stone to the back is gone okay so that's really the only stone that's left but by the time this castle goes up, he should have 1,300 stone for two more castles, or at the very least, buy a little bit of stone with your gold. Yeah, I think if MBL knew how cash-strapped his Britain opponent was, he maybe would have stayed in a little bit, maybe lost a castle at town center, but gone up to Imperial and tried to put up a bit more of a stiff resistance. Hera, banking on reaching Imperial first, absolutely dominates militarily, even though I say dominates position-wise, not really kill count, <laughs> 123 kills to 124 is not exactly domination but with these stronger units and look at Hera's economy I mean how many stables do you think Hera has 7 stables 4 archery ranges and 3 castles that's 14 structures unless my I, no wait a second 7 4 yeah that's 14 military structures the relevant military structures ignore the siege workshop ignore the barracks 14 to 4. Two castles, two archery rangers. So MBL here has the resources, has no way, no way to spend them efficiently. And so decides to tap out, live to fight another day. Hera getting the big W in a fun little battle here. A fun matchup. Uh, I should say a few battles. Look at the battlefield. 
Terra gets the W across the entire map. But GG to both players. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips and make sure to subscribe and enable notifications so that you're notified of my latest uploads.